Um, so storage, backup, and archive. Now, in, in terms of putting together an intro, it is it is an interesting section. It's certainly one of my favourite, um, but like me, it's not the sexiest part of the industry. Um, it's an area, however, that can make and break a facility, uh, and that's because it's it's quite a, a, an integral part, and it's almost like the spine of the facility. Um, if you implement a quality storage and a quality uh, set of connectivities within a facility, uh, you can you can greatly increase your productivity. You can transform how you deliver material. You can you can uh, really create a, a fantastic workflow just because of the flexibility of your storage. Um, but if you put the wrong thing in, or you don't do it uh, in the in the correct way, or you don't uh, take uh, uh, I guess a consultative approach or an approach that um, that that interrogates what you need to do every day. It can actually cripple your facility, and we've been called into a number of facilities whereby uh, the the system has either been put together or not. Uh, not enough metrics and not enough calculations were put into it and we've had to uh, come in and uh, I guess fix uh, a lot of a lot of problems so um, I'm putting that out there and the reason is the reason I put that out there is a lot of the storage vendors that you'll see here uh, we have handpicked ourselves because we know uh, how they work for you and your facility uh, and uh, yeah we we like them as well. So, so I'll jump. I'll jump into the the front end of it now. Um, uh, I'll put the Addo Thunder Thunderlink. Um, essentially, what the Thunderlink is is it's looking at your MacBook Airs, your iMacs, and your new Mac. Pros as well uh, to be able to connect to either 10 gigabit Ethernet or fiber channel. Uh, there's more and more of a requirement to have more people on um, either high speed NAS or on the SAN, uh, but the actual workstation itself doesn't need to be as, as full on. Uh, so obviously, if you're upgrading to a Mac Pro from an existing Mac Pro, so a silver Mac Pro to a black Mac Pro, um, you you have no option to put PCI cards in. Uh, so that's where the Thunderlink comes in. So the Thunderlink's able to, it, it's uh, got 10 gigabit per second th through each port. So you can actually daisy chain through that. Um, the good thing about the Addo systems is, and the same with their fiber channel cards, they always include the SFPs, which are a, uh, which are a decent size cost if you don't have them included. So a lot of cards, are, you know, I've had some customers say, well, this card's only $600, and then they end up having to pay for SFPs on top. It costs a little bit more. Uh, so it's always worth noting that, and that's uh, included within the Thunderlink as well. So why would you use a fiber channel Thunderlink? Well, if you've got a, a Stornex SAN or an XSAN uh, and you want to just put some IMAX on it. I'm dealing with a customer now that's doing that. They literally just want to put 10 IMAX uh, onto their existing uh, high-speed SAN, and uh, it's a very simple, cheap, easy way of putting of putting it on. Um, costs about $1,200, $1,300, uh, so it's not not a hell of a lot of money, and um, yeah, it's quite a, quite a cool system. Similarly, with the um, the 10 gigabit Ethernet, if you're utilizing a high-speed NAS uh, and you need to connect either via RJ45 10 gigabit Ethernet or whether you need to do SFP Plus, you can do either of them. So uh, quite a cool little system. <coughs> it's basically like a heatsink with a uh, PCI card in it. So uh, and Atto is always uh, we consider Atto probably one of the the well the most premium of the uh, fiber channel devices that um, that we represent. Next up, Roden Schwartz. So Roden Schwartz, you you will have by the end of this presentation, you will have seen Roden Schwartz three times, and there's a there's a particular reason behind that. Obviously, Roden Schwartz bought uh, DVS, which Johan mentioned before. Roden Schwartz for the broadcasters are certainly um, uh, for the RF transmission uh, and the, uh, the communication sector. Uh, definitely the big boys. Them buying DVS was uh, interesting to say the least, uh, but uh, when you see the uh, storage device that is here, I think you'll agree that uh, it was a pretty bloody good move. <laughs> so, okay, I'm not going to show you the picture yet because it's it's uh, it's certainly absolutely fantastic when I show you and I'll put it into context. So, uh, when we when we usually sell into post and VFX and um, uh, post VFX and 3D houses and certainly a lot of the TVC generation um, 
uh, generation facilities, um, we we've often gone down a store next uh, a store next um, file system SAN pathway, and the reason being is uh, customers generally in that space have an Autodesk flame, uh, a couple of smoke on Macs, probably some nuke boxes, a couple of a um, uh, couple of resolves potentially, uh, but certainly a lot of different platforms. So and. Th the requirement that they have is quite high data rates as well. So we've been doing Stornex based solutions for probably seven or eight years now, um, and I certainly think we're I certainly think we're uh, one of the top, if not the top, integrators of that in Australia. Uh, and previously, we've put together systems uh, that for for those customers that are based on the DVS brand. Um, now, previously, DVS has uh, we've sold the Spicer Box. Flex. So what the Spicer Box Flex was, if you were, I'm sure everyone was on this um, webinar last year, the Spicer Box Flex was essentially a 5RU appliance, which was quite uh, which is quite small, um, that delivered five streams of 2K in a Stornex file system. So uh, that's that's quite an incredible amount of bandwidth being um, being put through a single box. So that's five streams of 2K in a single box. And we've sold uh, we've sold quite a number of them in Australia, and we've got a lot of very very happy customers with it. But being German, they like to innovate. Roden Schwartz love to innovate, so they took me over to their booth and showed me what the new products were. And I was like, yep, Venice looks cool. Yep, Clipster looks cool. I know those products quite well. And then they showed me the Spicer Box cell. Okay, so just to put it in perspective, we had five streams of 2K in a 5RU appliance. What they're telling, uh, what they're, I'm telling you now is quite incredible. They have managed to put the same bandwidth in a 1RU box five streams of 2K in a 1RU box with the metadata controller and a 16 gig fiber card with 30 2.5 inch drives. And you can have your choice of SAS, SATA or SSD and you can uh, pump out five streams of 2K. Uh, if you want redundant metadata controllers, just buy a second one. So you could uh, you can essentially have what would have been, uh, and that's uncompressed 2K DPX. Uh, Riohan makes the makes a point here, and it's definitely worth uh, noting. Five streams of 2K DPX. Uh, what would have been for two Spicer Box cells, you would usually get 10 streams of 2K DPX. Uh, what we would have had to have put together for you previously is effectively a 10RU solution as opposed to a 2RU solution. To me, that is just absolutely incredible. And uh, I kept dragging people over to it saying, look at it, look at it. It's amazing. It's fantastic. And uh, just, to throw, just to throw something in there for you as well, they give you a little touch screen on the front. Uh, the great thing about the Spicer Box cell is you still get all of the sand management tools, your Mephisto, your defrag tasks, your Spicer software. All of that is still included in, these, in the 1RU box. Um, Definitely my pick of the show, uh, and I defy anyone to pick one over and above what the Spicer Box cell was. So if you want to have a look at it and you want to have a chat with us, uh, it's shipping July is my understanding, um, and I am waiting for, for an update on that, but um, I want one. Everyone should have one. So uh, <laughs> I'll pass over to Matt now, uh, who's going to take us through the small tree products. Thank you, Sean. So a little bit about Smalltree. These are a bunch of guys that used to be computer science engineers at Silicon Graphics. So you may remember them from Jurassic Park and they did lots of networking drivers for SGI and all their weird network interfaces they had. And as SGI kind of augured in, they broke off and started Smalltree and started doing networking products and then later storage products. And Smalltree is extremely good at real-time video and audio. So Smalltree builds some of the best entry-level shared storage products around and uses some cool technology to make it work. One of the things I love about their stuff is they use FreeBSD, which is kind of like Mac OS X's bigger brother. So it's a lot of the same code, same tuning, same features. And Smalltree builds... Um, in these great engineering tools and lets them watch everything that is going on in real time. They can test huge loads and simulate what editors are actually doing, and then they can see how it responds. 
So they pick products, sorry, they pick components off the shelf and put it together, make sure it all works properly, tweak the code and make a product that works for not a lot of money. Small tree usually comes in a lot less expensive, a lot less expensive than the other competitors. The products include in Titanium Z storage servers. They have everything from a small five drive mobile toaster kind of box to a 16 drive box. You can span up to a petabyte worth of storage with additional chassis. So let's start off with the with the small small box, which is the, the, the TZ5 on your top left. It's essentially a little toaster with a handle on it and it builds on mobile gaming technology. And small tree saw it was perfect for the video for what video editors do. For instance, you could have a DIT going on site or you're going up a mountain to shoot some ski scenes. Um, we actually have a customer that takes it up the side of the mountain, runs it off a generator, hooks up four editors um, to, the, to this little box, gets everything done, takes it back to the office and they're finished. In addition, Small Tree supports all the NLEs and they have added a bunch of new features for Avid this year. So now they can do true Avid media sharing. So there is no trouble with re-indexing anymore. And they added something called the Project Wrangler. And what it is, it lets you have a really simple and easy interface, interface with the iSCSI targets. A user can simply click and say, I've got a new project. It will create a new iSCSI target for them. It's up on the server and everyone else can see it. The editor can mount it, read, right and everyone else can has it as read only and they can all share their their media and projects together with most of small tree products it's ethernet connectivity one gig and 10 gig small tree also had these cool little promise technology boxes which are which are thunderbolt to dual 10 gig e on their stand this year and it was a very popular little device so for 700 odd Bucks, you can have two 10 gig Ethernet ports hooked up to Thunderbolt 2. So this turns your uh, laptop into a little little beast. Small Tree did a lot of work supporting all the new features of Thunderbolt, like hot plug, unplug, PCIe pause, wake on LAN, to make it a really good product. The other products which are new are a little Thunderbolt enclosure called the the Robin, which is your bottom little box at the bottom left of the screen. It houses eight drives, a RAID card and 10 gig E. You plug into your laptop and it turns it into a little Mac, little mini server. So you can suck in all your data and it's on the storage. You can hook up your other guys who want to watch the video when you're done. For those that need something larger and not as portable, there is the, the Titanium Z8 and 16 bays on your right hand side. Which are two and three U, and can expand, and you can expand these. And as I said, you can go up to a petabyte of storage. These boxes offer real-time video editing. Uh, the eight bay can deliver up to 700 megabytes of real-time video editing bandwidth, and you can put in any type of networking you need. So that could be 10 gig base T, optical, gigabit. You don't need a switch. Everyone can just direct connect. And what I really like about Small Tree is their technical support. They're all kernel engineers. So when you call them and say something is slow or something has crashed, they don't just, they don't just say that's not our problem. They look at the kernel panic and they fix it. Um, what's really cool is Small Tree has fixed a number of Intel bugs, Samba, AFP, ZFS bugs. So it gives them a leg up on, on a lot of their competitors. If you'd like to know more or have a, have a demo, we've got some set up in our, in our lab in our Tarman. So give us a call. All right, next up, I'm going to talk about DDP or Dynamic Drive Pool. And these guys came to the market uh, in 2006 and very quickly became recognized by the International Association of Broadcast Manufacturers as one of the top 10 most innovative technologies and, it, and one of the most advanced storage products in the market today. Um, any combination of Windows, Mac or Linux computers can be connected at the same time with all suites being able to read and write. Connectivity is via one gig, 10 gig, or even 40 gig ethernet. And you can gang multiple connections together for higher bandwidth. For instance, we have customers doing this with two and four times one gig ethernet on the new Mac Pro via Thunderbolt to ethernet adapters. There is project and file sharing for Final Cut, Premiere, and Avid. 
if that's done using bin locking. Um, and there are a number of products in the range, starting with the standalone series. So storage, the server, metadata controller, all of this is in one box. The only thing you need to do is connect your Ethernet cable from your suite directly to the DDP or via a switch. There is the micro DDP, which is a one new form factor with two SSD drives. They are very, very portable and only a couple of kilograms. And we actually put these ones out on site for proof of concepts for people that want to hook up a couple of suites and see how good the DDP range is. Next up is the mini DDP, which comes with SSD drives or two and a half inch SAS or SAS drives. Um, you can also do a mixture of both. So if you're working on 10-bit uncompressed 2K or 4K DPX, you could get eight SSD drives. Then there is the fully redundant series with one or two server heads and multiple JBODs. If using two heads, your media is always safe because if one fails, it will automatically fail over. JBODs can be up to 60 bays with support for six terabyte drives. I just announced, so that's some serious amount of storage there. And something which complements the standalone series is the mirror DDP, which is used for near line. Um, media can be synchronized to the near line chassis. What I love about DDP is its block level storage. So it supports uh, things like DaVinci Resolve, Autodesk Smoke and Flame, in addition to your traditional NLE clients. Because it is block level, it's the perfect fiber SAN replacement. And Digistore has now transitioned a number of XSAN sites to DDP. One last thing I'll add is you can connect a tape drive or library directly to the DDP and use ArchiWare P5 to back up or archive. And once again, if you'd like to know more about this product or have a, have a demonstration at our lab in, in Artarman, let us know. Next up, we're going to talk about EditShare, and, and they build themselves as, as a manufacturer of high-performance, scalable central storage systems, media asset management software, video servers, sports replay systems, backup and archiving software, and of course, the, the professional video editor Lightworks, which runs on Mac, Linux, and Windows. They put all these cool products together into a collaborative workflow environments like production companies, broadcasters, TV studios, schools and universities that teach production, and anyone else who makes film, television and video. Um, Digistore, we just recently put one of these into the University of Sydney, so that's up and running now. Um, EditShare had some great things happening, happening across the product lines, and what really excited me this year in terms of in terms of storage was two things. First one is 40 gig ethernet, which is enabling them to support uncompressed 4K DPX, which was actually showing on the stand. And also part of edit, the EditShare version seven software release, uh, they have added a quality of service bandwidth control feature. So if you think about having 40 gig ethernet and 4K in your facility, people who are trying to do ingest, play it in real time, you could see there could be some conflicts there. And what's great about the whole quality of service bandwidth reservation system is that it enables you to give particular users the right to request bandwidth that will never fail. So you could be doing DNxHD or ProRes ingest, and that cannot fail no matter what else is going on on the storage system. No matter how many streams of 4K you're trying to play, that ingest will always succeed, which is critical in a shared storage environment. And because EditShare does this at the disk level and not at the network level, it's one of the smartest ways to do it. So you're not cutting off people's capabilities when you don't need to. Only when they are interfering with someone else. If you do it at the network level, you're putting a gate up and that's not as much bandwidth as you're going to get. And that's as much bandwidth as you're going to get. Um, EditShare system started under eight, eight sorry, 10,000 for the Ultra system, which it has four or eight drives. And you can buy one of the field systems, which are a little bigger and a little bit more flexible with slots available for video ingest card or a tape library. And EditShare, of course, makes the larger systems which can expand to petabytes. But even with the smaller systems, you get the whole range of EditShare software. So it's a, it's a whole collaborative workflow system in a box. And next week, we're gonna have Paul Hayes, 
uh, from EditShare visiting us, doing a seminar at Digistore on Wednesday the 14th at 10 a.m. So if you want to attend this, please, uh, please get in contact. Okay, next up we're going to hand over to Sean, I believe. No, once again, it's Johan to talk about Avid. Hello again. Um, so this time we're going to talk about ISIS. So just the ISIS storage. So ISIS 5500 and 7500. I guess the main thing that they've, uh, I guess, announced for, for NAB is basically just supporting 4K and Ultra HD workflows. So... Um, what does that mean? I guess most people who are using ISIS are using it for editorial purposes only, so it's not really being used for finishing as such. Um, if you look at that graphic on the screen, you can see that, that ISIS really lives within a very big, avid ecosystem. So it's obviously everything from Media Composer to Interplay to Pro Tools from Airspeeds. Um, that they, they really do have their own ecosystem, and, and ISIS is really the storage that um, that you you know is, is the backbone of, of, of that's that infrastructure. Um, people have been, I guess, you know, we've had customers all the way back from the old land share to Unity days um, who still would swear by ISIS, uh, by ISIS or Unity. Um, I've got one example from the other day where we've got had a user who has had Unities for the last 10 years or so and quite quite a big uh, a Unity um, facility with all the fibre infrastructure. So I remember that was quite expensive in the olden days, putting all the fibre in and doing all those runs. Um, and it has about 10 clients hooked up to it. Anyway, that they... The system was running rock solid, like up until today. So you know, it, it's it's been going for I think about six or seven years. The current infrastructure. I mean, they put a few expansion chassis in on those times, but it still ran with you know hardly any. I can't even remember the last time they had a failed drive. Um, the other day they installed Mavericks. Mavericks obviously on on the Mac OS side doesn't have the Unity client. So I thought that they were going to come up to me and say, Johan. What have you done? I've, I've, we've installed Maverick because we wanted to install this other piece of software, but now we can't use our, you know, our, our Unity infrastructure, which we've, you know, we've built all the fiber and we built all the storage all, all over those years. And I thought it was going to be quite a hard conversation. But as soon as I said to them, look, you know, you've had your storage for however long. Was it good? They said, yeah, that doesn't skip a beat. They said, how does how does ISIS 5500 work or the 5000s? And I said. In the first few months, we've had a couple of failed drives, but since then, which has been a few years now, we don't see anything come back. I don't see drives, I rarely see drives come back. You don't see any kind of systems malfunctions. You don't have people ringing you up telling you that they haven't got enough bandwidth, that it's, it's, the system's falling over. It, it just doesn't happen. So once we had that conversation, and they pretty much just turned around and said, well, okay, yep, we'll, we'll go and speak to the finance people and we'll come back and we'll happily upgrade to an ISIS, we'll happily upgrade our all of our fibre infrastructure back to Ethernet um, because they know that it's going to work for the next probably five to ten years, right, without skipping a beat. So it's just one of those things, I guess, that for me differentiates <laughs> the ISIS storage from a lot of the other storages. Uh, you know, a lot of them are very good for very specific user cases, um, and, and most of the ones that we've discussed are all actually, you know, the best of breed in, in, in their environments. And their environments, you know, we've put, we've put all of them into separate environments. Okay, on to the 7,500. 7, so it's, it's the big daddy. So it's got no single point of failure, which means it's the whole thing is basically a bunch of blades. So your drives are blades, your, your power supplies are blades, your, your switching is it can be all blade as well. Um, so you can have, if you need three or four power supplies, you put them in. If you need, um, you know, to have any configuration you want to have maximum redundancy, you, you can do it. It's, it's a little bit like Lego, but it's a little bit more expensive than Lego. Um, it does scale up to three petabytes, which is pretty massive. Um, and you can have 333, you know, clients running simultaneously, which which is massive. Um, 
and with NAB, you know, it's got the the, the 4K Ultra and whatever support. The five thousand, the fifty-five thousand, the fifty-five hundred. Probably this is probably one we roll out more and more. I mean, you know, every day. There's it's got so many of these out there now that it's ridiculous. Um, it's basically rock solid. Um, it, the performance and playback uh, it, it never skips a beat. Um, scalable up to what seven hundred and sixty-eight terabytes with ninety clients running on the system. You know, if you need not more than ninety clients, you just you probably want to get another ISIS or get a seven a seven thousand five hundred anyway. Um, the rocks are like I say, we we, not, we knock these fellas out uh, of the, out of our our time facility every, every day. Um, so I think what I was saying before about ISIS being rock solid is, is why people choose ISIS. Um, that, you know, all of the components they use are cleverly, you know, are carefully selected. The, you know, they've got a very strict device level specification and qualification. Um, basically, I guess going, other than going through every point, the QC is obviously immaculate and we see that every day as far as you know returns not coming back so um so yeah that's isis um i'm, I'm assuming that you know 50 percent of the people listening use it every day anyway okay that's avid now we're off to archieware for backup so and archive so this is going to go over to matt thank you johan so Archieware is all about backup and archive. It's software only and it's multi-platform. So it runs on Windows, Mac, Linux and Solaris and works with basically any storage hardware. So you can do backup and archive on disk and tape. For most people in the broadcast industry, it makes sense to actually store things on tape for the long term. And it's the only reliable long term media um, and it's used by, um, it's actually used by every bank and insurance company. And since we now have desktop standalone tape drives and they're not, they're not that expensive anymore, you can create an archive on a level like your, your banks or bank or insurance company does. And it's very easy to access. So you have an, a, a centralized catalog. You can search for your files and you can add metadata. In the video industry, the most popular product is archive and synchronize. So synchronized is used for cloning if you have a SAN system, which is which a lot of people are working on. Um, at the same time, you want to have it available all the time so you can clone it to a secondary storage so you can switch over if something goes wrong with the with your SAN. Archive is very attractive as people can actually see their media as a as a preview that is generated for them. You can add metadata and the organizers the organizing of 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 this is a is a great here. LTO5 tapes can handle 1.5 terabyte per cartridge with LTO6 being able to do 2.5 terabyte. And Archieware is browser based and very easy to set up. It automatically detects your tape drive or library so it can be up and running in a couple of minutes. You simply detect data on your local machine or your network and archive to LTO tape. At the same time, Archieware generates low res clips and thumbnails for the catalog. So the user can search and restore. A 30 day trial license is available um, at archieware.com. And we've rolled this out at a number of sites, um, everything from a, a standalone tape drive up to massive libraries. So if you do want to know more, give us, give us a call. I'm now going to hand over to Sean, who's going to talk up a little bit about his little little find, MLogic. Hi guys, look, it's just a really really quick add-on to, I guess, um, uh, Matt's Matt's conversation about Archie. Where uh, we've been doing MLogic for a little while, um, just. Previously, it's been more uh, Thunderbolt expanders, single single PCI expanders. Um, but we saw this at NAB, and I thought this was quite cool. It's a Thunderbolt attached device. It's got LTO6 and it's LTFS. 
uh, and it's quite amazing. So what, whatever system you're currently using, whether you're using Storage DNA, whether you're using Brew or Archieware, you can utilize that, chuck it on your MacBook Pro or chuck it on your Mac Pro and just have it off the side so you can get your peace of mind on your LTO backups. So quite a cool little, quite a cool little system. It's, um, I, uh, I wish I actually saw it at NAB. I didn't actually get a, a lot of time to uh, to spend with the M-Logic guys, but certainly it was a cool little product. So, um, yeah, just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, but, yeah, check out the rest of the M-Logic products as well because they, uh, they certainly um, have quite a number of cool little systems. So that's all we've got for the storage backup and archive section. We've got a few minutes for uh, questions, so more than happy to... Um, more than happy to take questions, and we'll kick off in a in a second uh, with the next section, which is editorial, post, and finishing. 